You mentioned the Daily Show. Got to ask, how do you like that gig? I like it. I think it's. I think late night's changing. Mm-hmm. I don't know in the what though. Yeah. So I actually think that's a little uneasy. It's been very fun. You know, Trevor's departure was definitely not a shock. Him leaving was not a shock to me. When was more the shock and how? Yeah. You know, like yeah. that. But because I don't even think anybody knew. No one knew. Yeah. Not a soul. And he just said it on the show. And then we went to a commercial break. Wow. <laughs> it's like, what? So. Have you asked him why that about that thought process that went behind that? Or is that a mystery? I think, I think a lot of it was just boiled down to, I just didn't want anybody to talk me out of it. Because when you're doing something that monumental, everybody's going to have an opinion. And that's yeah. just him taking yep. control over his own life and decisions. Yep. So I respect it. I, I enjoy it. I've had a lot of fun on the daily show the question becomes what is late night changing into because mm-hmm. our job is to parody the news but if the way people get their news is changing then the vehicles and how we parody have to match the evolution of how news is consumed yeah but how news is being consumed that's the question that has to be explored and looked at how do you parody Marjorie Taylor Greene. How do you parody what's really happening? Okay, because yeah. because what's really happening has become, you know, and Santos and back in the day uh, when I was getting started writing comedy in college, you know, I was part of this lampoon organization that would do like a parody of Time Magazine, a parody of Newsweek. And you can parody something that's got a straight line. You can parody something that's very stiff and formal. And universally, everybody understands. Understands. And then so a parody of it is kind of delightful. But we always knew you can't parody the National Enquirer. I think Saturday Night Live struggles with that. I think everybody struggles with it. Yeah, I do think that there is a way to fish in a different pond from the traditional people who we get the opinions from. Yep, yep. So I think that's part of the evolution. You know, when you look at TikTok and Instagram, what's interesting and what, and a lot of this is from the shutdown. A lot of people who were former consumers of information now purport themselves to be distributors of information. And we regular Joe Blow people accept them as aggregators. Well, this guy Tim said it, so let me see what Tim has to say. He's got a good camera and that's a nice lens. I trust Tim now. He's got a good beanbag chair behind him. Yeah, I follow him on YouTube now. So there are more people putting information out there as well. And I think to a degree, you know, as a society, as a country at least, we've become okay with not caring who we get our news from. Yeah. Or the accuracy of it. And I think that the parody lies in that. Yep. I think the parody lies not necessarily in what the news of the day is, but the delivery method of it, you know, and as we would, you know, people go to bed, like, let's just be real about the ratings, the ratings of linear television as a whole. Yeah. Not even late night. Everything's going down. Mm -hmm. So if ratings are going down, part of it is because people are laying in bed looking at Tim and his beanbag and his LED light because mm-hmm. that's just as good and entertaining for them yeah. as what's nice and polished on a shiny floor studio. I will tell you this. Uh, I'm an old timer and I came up in late night at a time when late night shows, there weren't that many, but because of the way TV was structured, these shows made money hand over fist. And that's why shows had an orchestra. They had a big band. They had you know, money, uh, that is not the way it is anymore. And so you will see the effects. The effects will be maybe some of these late night shows, uh, you know, as hosts retire or leave, will be replaced with something else. Maybe that time will go back to the affiliates. Everyone's speculating, but who knows what's going to happen. I do have to say this, because I know you're a busy man. I want to let you go, but I do (laughs) sincerely feel really good that you're out there. I uh, you're a you're a really good man. You're very uh thoughtful and, and crazily talented. And I'm glad you're out there and you're thinking about this because I think 
it makes me feel better about the whole world <laughs> of comedy. I'm serious. I'm being honest with you. Thank it you. makes me, uh, I always have been very impressed with you. And I'm just, the more you do, the more just crazily impressed I am. So uh, go forth, continue uh, doing great work. And I know that we're in good hands. Like when I, when I meet people much younger than me who are, you know, ethical and and wise and creative, I feel better. I sleep better at night. So thank you. Well, Seriously. Thank you. thank you, brother. Yeah. Appreciate you for having me. Well, I appreciate you. Now, please get out. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it to end with me throwing you out. <laughs> get out. I said get out.